Lord, there's many churches here. Now, having said that, and I want you all to know this, there are some of you in this room, you think that you hit a bad law. It's not bad law. Somebody who dislike you, who dislike what you did, dislike what God blessed you with, they decided that you will never ever monitor anything. So when you were unsuspecting, they did what they did is they put something in your drink, they put something in your house, they put something on your clothes, and they, just, they put you to be, to be dead. Some of you are only living because of the grace of God. Some of you are only living. You come to the rocky land. Are you? Make it quick. Good. So what? When you build, when you went to build your house, they knew it was yours, so they went and they worked something on you. When you were doing good, they said, "No, that person, I'm not. They can't do good." So they went ahead. And it did some things to harm you. Listen to me. I'm going to talk with the Lord again, but I have to share this with the Spirit put on me. For whatever reason, people hate when God began to bless you. People want to get you out of your blessing. They hate it. They dislike it. They don't want you to get your possession. You live long enough and you will see it. Lying down in my bed on more than one occasion. A woman, I don't know who this woman is. She was hiding behind a veil. This happened about a year, two years ago. She was hiding behind a veil. This man who was the priest, he appeared. And he, as I was lying down, he took a nail for this thing, a wooden nail. And he took it and he nailed it right here in my head while I was asleep. Right here in my head. And I heard the woman ask him, you think that's enough for him? He said, yes, that's it for him. But he turned around and I saw the woman come around the, the veil. And then I heard the man said, but, just so in case, I am going to put another one in his head. And he took another plow plow and put it here in my head. So right here and right here, he put two prongs in my head, but I rejected it. Amen. I resisted it. And for a while, I couldn't be who I wanted to be. <laughs> who I wanted to be, I could not be, so what? The enemy was doing is he was leading me down a path that I should not be. But every time I come before God, I say, God, you know that this ain't me. And you know what they did because you saw them what they did. And I said, now you tell God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you remove those things from out of my head. And we turn them back to the person who sent them. Watch and see something that happens significant. Whoever sent it, I want you to turn it back to them. Whatever you design for me, let it happen to them. Amen. And so a lot of people are saying, oh, this, there's a price that you've got to pay when you stand in the office of a man of God. It's a price you've got to pay. So why are you thinking that the enemy finally thought that he had me? God said to me, son, the enemy don't have you because I have you. Now I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. Amen. And some of you in this room, and when God released me, everything that the enemy had hold up for me and for my family, God began to release it. God release it. God release it. Somebody say release. There are a lot of things that you should have. You and your family, your children, the enemy have decided and designed that you will have nothing. You all say, every time I pray, 
Reverend Charlotte could not be in Corker, but will we just need that? Let me tell you something. You better be standing right when these things hit you. Amen. So what you got to do now, you have to find a way to get yourself released by not going to the people who did the, the damage in the first place. So they say, let's go to the old man. Go to the old man. It's the old man who put you in that place in the first place. What you need to do, you need to go to the man who's still the waters. You need to go to the man who comes to see. You got to go to the man who's able to deliver you from all satanic influence. But some of you in this room, if you check yourself, you will know that this can't be of God. This ain't God. But you gotta release yourself. Yes, yes. And you're gonna see a lot of people who try to damage you. When you release yourself, you will see them falling by the wayside. Yes, Nobody wants you to walk into your season and you're not gonna get there easy. Right. So more than once, people try to kill me for no reason. But the next one try to kill me, they can die and many of their children can die too. So that's what I can tell people. Do not touch God's anointed and do his prophet no harm. Amen. So you all need to begin to say, go and find yourself. You find yourself a prayer of deliverance. And some of us in this room, we are saved, but we need to be delivered. Come on. Amen. We need to be delivered from some stuff. Because the devil sent people right here. They sent them here. To put things here, to stop what's going on here. But I stand by to tell you today that God will outlast any problem and every difficulty you go through. When the enemy thinks that you are done, God will be still around moving on your behalf. It's time for the people of God to have sacred fear. Amen. This morning, I think my brother Jeremy, all with me. That's just a word to encourage some, not to encourage, but to remind somebody yeah. that you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. You know flesh and blood. You are wrestling against some demons. They designed to hate you. And they decide to harm you. Yeah. Every time you make two steps forward, they come and say, I'm going to make some step backward. But I put the devil on notice today that you are the next number one, you're going to go into a crisis hell. But the people who are waiting for you, they're gone. They're done. They're supposed to be dead. In 2012, before that. 2010, he's supposed to be dead. Whatever they did to him, they wanted him to die in a, in a, in a traffic accident. Only God know how he got out of that van. Secured and safe. Somebody wanted him dead. Think about your life. And think about what's happening in your life. Every time you try to get something, it vanishes out your hand. Somebody hates you for no reason at all. Why do they hate you? For no reason at all. But you gotta plead the blood. You gotta plead the blood of Jesus, that sacrificial blood of Jesus against every blood sacrifice. Because the blood of Jesus is powerful than the blood of goats and rams and chicken. But their blood. Jesus, that gold ring that they set aside because the gold ring cannot vanish. They're going to vanish. The gold ring will be there, but whatever they decide, it's going to happen to them. So you all better take it serious this morning. And I ain't joking. Watch yourself. Some devils will be able to take you down. If they can't get you to one way, they get you to another. They'll find somebody to put something on you. But baby, let me tell you something. You better be careful because I am a dangerous. Amen. That goes from the from my top straight to the bottom. 
I am I a dangerous. Say after me, I. I. Am I uh -huh. a dangerous? You better get armed and dangerous. You better get armed and dangerous. Amen. Amen. When God up for you, you better get armed and dangerous. Because they ain't gonna let you get it without a fight. Amen. Amen. Now, so this morning, for a few minutes, when I doing what I have to do, everybody complaining, oh, it is in the next. Well, let me do what I have to do. And let me do it the way God fixed me to do it. Because nobody can do what I do in the way I do it for this time and this season. It just wouldn't work. These are perilous times. You know, easy times. Perilous times, my friends. And you better know what you're standing on. I heard a person in my face told me what she had in her mind. You get Rex to tell me what was in their mind. You get Rex. And they told me what is in their mind. You want to see someone get someone Rex. You don't even know what in a person's mind is. You get them Rex. That's why I like to get people Rex. That's when you will see who they truly are. You don't even know who people are until they get back. So mind those smiles, baby. Those smiles ain't real. Don't mind those smiles. People smile in your face. But they ain't right. You ain't standing on God's promise of this word. You're gone. And so this morning, aren't we thankful? I'm thankful. The Almighty God for sparing my life to see this day. Hallelujah. I'm particularly thankful for this chance to speak about God's intentions. Since Daniel is recording. From the creation of the world, I noted that everything God made, God said that it was good. Somebody say good. 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 Now I personally, I have a problem with people telling me that I want, I have to die in poverty. That's what the witchcraft workers and the voodoo people want you to be. They want you to die in poverty. That's why they throw and they sprinkle things around your house. That's why they stay up late in the night, calling your name and in seances and what have you and pleading chicken blood and all kind of foul snake and thing around you to keep you poor and to keep you broke, and to keep you sick. Some people give you something and they say, that's enough to take him out. But honey, let me tell you something. There's a hard knock to crack. That's what you gotta say to yourself. Yeah. I am a hard knock to crack because I am standing in Christ. Yeah. So I believe today that God when he created this universe, he created us as is on the board, in his image and in his, after his likeness. We were made in the image and we are created in the likeness of God. Everyone beautiful. You believe that you are not beautiful when you are not made in God's image and likeness. The devil tell you that. Every one of us, we are made in the image and we are made in the likeness of God. And if since we are made in the image and likeness of God, it means that God has deposited it in our hands. Is that Robin? Thanks, Robin. God bless you. We are Robin is back. Good. Image and the likeness of God. And He created us with power. <clears throat> he created us with authority. And no one can take that from you. No one. God made male gender and God made female gender, but he made the man, the male gender, from the dust of the ground. He made man from the dust of the ground. Go to the next one, Jerry. Let's see what happens. God made man from the dust of the ground. And then when God made man, God breathed into man's nostril the breath of life. He breathed into man's nostril 
the breath of life. Every one of us, we have breath. Without breath, you're dead. God breathed into our nostril the breath of life. We should be thankful for life. Yes. The devil can't take life from you. No, and you want to see a person who's afflicted by the devil? They live long, 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 long sin. Because the devil can take them out of the race, but he can't take them, he can't kill them. Uh, you already have me mind. So the devil will harm you, but you can live in a, in, a, in a situation, in a bad situation for a long time, unless you realize that somebody got you. Because I have Mr. Helburn, he used to say when we used to be playing domino, he said, Newton, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the hand on you. He said, I'm going to put the hand on you. When he was about to fall in his domino game, he said, I'm gonna put the hand on you. Can all the people know that when they say they can put the hand on you, that means they're putting the crop on you. They're fixing you. So he said, I can put the hand on you, watch it for the hand. And so we will laugh and say the hand can't do nothing. So some of us we have the hand. Some people right in this room, you got the hand on you. You know that you got the hand on you. But I can tell you, put the hand on me, and God's hand will rest on you. And there will be a war in heaven, and the devil is defeated. We're getting somewhere this morning. Some of y'all think this something. You know what happened? Y'all think I think I'm joking. You all say, this is happening, you know, he said, well, listen to me, when you see me speak, God's speaking. I can guarantee you that one. When you see me hanging on something like this, God's saying something to someone, somebody in this room, somebody put their hand on them. My Lord. My Lord. So man made, the man was made, us human males, made from the dust of the ground. God breathed in his nostril the bread of life. God never breathed into a woman's nostril the bread of life. No. That's not male chauvinism. No. Woman was never created out of the dust. Woman never got the bread of God never came and put his mouth on a woman's mouth and performed a resuscitation to her. No. It was man that God laid out. Yes. And crafted as it was a junkano suit. And then breathed into it, and it became a living soul. That's what God did to the male gender. Read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and yeah. breathed into his nostril the bread of life, and man, M-A-N, became a living soul. I don't know why woman hate to be woman. I don't know where, where this thing comes from in the world where a woman believes that there's some, something to be gained by acting like a man. I'm thinking that the man has some more privilege than she has. We need to be contented with who God makes us to be. Now, then afterward, after this, the female was made from the flesh of the male. Let's see if we can find that. Good. The female gender was made from the flesh of the male. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, the man who is created in the dust, they will be out of me, who is naturally breathed into, and he caused this man to fall asleep, and as the man slept, this is the first Anastasia that has ever recorded in history, God put him to sleep. And while he was asleep, God performed a surgery on him, he had a Caesarean section. Man had a Caesarean section performed upon him by God himself. Yes. And I want you to know that the theologically, a man is a woman's mother. Theologically, a man is a woman's mother. That's why some of these men think that they should be a mother. They want to be a mother. But you can't be a mother because it was, it was, it was only for them. So you will never get this because this, the church here may not be ready to hear this kind of teaching. Come on now. Come on. I'm not going to stay 
God will grow bigger. Man carried woman. There. It is written. God had woman in man. And man gave birth to woman. And God removed her from man's rib surgically. He removed the woman out of the man. And woman, when woman was created of May, when woman came, she breathed like a baby. She has a little top, and she cried, and she breathed. Yeah. If you know the story, if you know it, Adam was the father and the mother. If not the father, he was the mother of Eve. God was the father of Eve. God was the father of Adam. And Adam was the mother of Eve. What makes a woman the mother of something? Any baby in here? Is this a baby? Good. The only thing that makes a baby a baby, a woman, a woman, is, boy, don't play with me. <laughs> she carried this baby in his womb. The woman carries the baby in his womb, her womb, and then at the appropriate time, she is relieved of this baby. And so thusly, she is called a woman only because she carries the baby and releases the baby out into the world. That's what man did. This is what man did. He had this woman. When the creation, God made him male and female. And here in Adam's rib, Adam's rib bosom, he's carrying her around, he's pregnant with a woman. And God said, at the appropriate time, I'm going to bring her forth. But let me see what he's going to do with those other animals. Let's see what kind of love he has for them. He didn't find any that he really had special love for, so God said, now, I'm going to take her out of him, put him to sleep and take her out. And here is the mother, Adam, giving birth to his baby, God being the father. This is so deep that some of you all think I'm talking sacrilege. No. Why? Because your mind is still, you're not prepared to forget about the crazy stuff that people was telling you and then seeing the scripture for what it is. It's not sacrilege. That's why there's a difference between man and woman. And it'll always be a difference. Some women, they feel like they want to be a man, and some man, they feel like they want to be a woman. That's bad. Now, if you are caught up in this controversy, if you are caught up in the controversy that you're a woman and you think that you're in love with a woman, you're a devil. You're going to hell if you don't change. I want that, that's right, if you are a woman and you are falling in love with another woman for what we call sexual gratification, you have a devil yeah. and you need to be delivered from that devil, otherwise you are going straight to hell. I don't care how rich you are, I don't care how educated you may be, I don't care how talented you are, that is a sin and God will judge all sin. Sin will stop you at the door and sin will buy you out forevermore. Now, if you think I'm telling a story, but again, Gabriel, please come here. And I want you women to judge. Those of you who are looking here today, I know you believe that it's acceptable that two men should love one another. Look at this. Hug me up, Gabriel. You only are Do you think this look good? No. <laughs> it got to be a sin. It's not wrong. It's wrong from the pits of hell. So I gotta let you know that no matter what they tell you about you being ancient and eki happen, you are in touch with the time. They are in touch with the time because the time is always God time, and God says for this cause is never man with man and woman with woman. That's wrong. You cannot, no matter how they're getting blessed, the devil can bless too. That's right. That ain't God. That's now friends, so from the creation, God's intention and his action towards man was for man's success and for his prosperity. This is 
a fact that no one can deny. Go to Jerry, let's see. God wanted us to succeed. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and 11, we find God saying, I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being. Not for disaster. I want to give you a future and a hope. The contemporary English worship says, I will bless you with a future filled with hope. A future of success, not a future of suffering. Which part of this tells you that you should live a poverty-stricken, sick, downgraded, destituted life, always busted and disgusted? Nothing in that speaks to that if, you, if you're looking at it right. God said, I know the plans I have for you, and the plans I have for you is a plan to give you a future filled with hope, a future of success, and not a future of suffering. So we got to rise up and tell that devil, devil, be thou removed behind my back, Satan. Right. And then again in John chapter 3, something, all that's the Old Testament. I bring it in the New Testament, and there we find, beloved, God speaking, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. And you draw two voices out of the millions and thousands of voices in the Bible to show you how God express, expressly spoke that he wants us to prosper. I want to prosper. How many of you want to prosper? You don't want to have to prosper. You can keep your hand down. But if the white man coming in at you, do you want to prosper? Yes, master. <laughs> yes, master. I want to prosper, master. You don't want your woman to tell you that you can prosper being good health. Nobody is better than you. People operate in the principles of God in such a way that they make themselves because we depend on man to make us great. Oh, if I could go down to Mount Tabor, I'm going to be somebody. Oh, if I can go up to Calvary Deliverance, I'm finally going to be somebody. When you get there, nobody can go to use anybody in there. And the only way you get to be known as somebody and if your pocketbook is speaking some big money. But that would be good if you could put the big money because that would be telling me that you are operating at the level that God wants you to operate at. So for much for that. So God's plan for man is for success and for prosperity. He wants man to prosper physically and spiritually. That's why you know what God did? God made a by, we call it by man. On one hand, man is flesh. Eve represents the material. A woman loves material things. Most women, they love things. But Adam, he represents the spiritual, the bread of life. The spiritual, God wants us not only to prosper spiritually, but God also wants us to prosper materially. So out of man, the flesh, which is the material, God brings forth the spirit out of the dust and the breath of life. So God wants us to take care to, to guard our spiritual life as well as our material life. You cannot just be here doing good in the body and broke as the Ten Commandments. You know what I mean? The time, time that people stop being broke. Oh, well, I come here to hear about sin. Sin, yeah, you come to hear about sin. We all have sin. This is the part you want to hear, right? We all have sin. We come short of the glory of God. The Bible said no sin will enter heaven. Sin will stop you at the door. It will buy you out forevermore. Anything that is not of faith is sin. God hates sin. God turns his face against those who, who sin. But by the same yardstick, you can go to heaven and you can die rich and go to hell. Yeah. The Bible says, how hardly can a rich man enter into the kingdom of God? It's unlikely that he enters because his heart is upon him. The Bible says, wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So when God blesses you, you have to put your treasure in the place where it ought to go. You just can't put it on yourself and your children. You got to plant some timber into the kingdom of heaven. You got to finance the end time gospel, friends. So I'm not telling you, oh, I can live this honky donkey sinful life and get rich and just be a rich devil. Yeah, you can do that. But I'm not going to be around when you're crying in hell. 
The Bible said the fire never go out there. And the worms will never stop eating you. If you want to go there, it's fine, but I'm not going there at all. But while I'm here, I want to have some dough beans in my pocket. Every Monday, every day, my wife likes to go to the shop. She, she breaks her all her money in the shop. People just know, you don't want to be, my God, come on, y'all. The only time being broke, we got to we gotta wake ourselves out of this. I'm, when I, by the time as I finish just setting this foundation by December, I'm going to show you all how to get rich. Now, what I want to do this morning in pursuance of that, you see there's something called seed, time, and harvest. I want to sow a seed this morning. And I can sow the seed, and I see everybody shaking their hand. Come, Sister Brown. Mother Brown, she was praying, Lord, I, I saw it. This seed in Mother Brown. Now, remember Mother Brown, if I sow a seed in you, much. you can't take that what I give you and say, this is my harvest. You have to now take a little something, no matter how small it is, and plant it back as a seed. Yeah. The only influence you have over your future is your seed. Right. Your seed is the only master that your future will obey. When God is requiring of you a, a seed, it means that God has in store for you a harvest. Let me tell you what happened is I, I don't want to say all my stuff because I got to tell December to be preaching on this if I live. The other night I was into a meeting and they were talking about money to give to this thing. Everybody money, money. When we finish, the gentleman, one of the preachers, he stood and said, I want you all to pray for me. I want you all to pray for my wife. And they said, we didn't ask, he said, first thing, pray for my wife. My wife is sick, she has thyroids, and I need, the doctor said the thyroid is gonna cost $10,000. And I said, well, as I was sitting there, the spirit said, you got to do something for him. Wow. And I said, I sort of, I said, I wanna donate, as a seed, $500 to the cost. Yeah. The next one of the job said, I wanna do two. Wow. And the next one said, I will do something too. And nobody else said anything, so I said, gentlemen, I said, you said this group is to help one another, but this man just invoked divinity, and now he's also invoking humanity, and what you all, ain't nobody else can do nothing? Wow. I said, I ain't got nothing to do, so I ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. But before I reached to the car, when he and the gentleman came out, and I got to my car, God said, I want you to give him a thousand dollars. God said, I want you to give this man a thousand dollars, one tenth, of what he's needing for that operation. And God said to me, when you give him a thousand dollars, since you give the tenth, I'm gonna give you the hundred percent. And not only will I give you the hundred percent, I'm gonna do something so spectacular in your life that when people see it, they're gonna say, it only could be God. Yeah. So why do you believe that when you say, oh, you got plenty money? If you got plenty money, then really God don't need to require of you anything. God, whenever God requires you to give a seed, say after me, whenever, whenever. God requires require. a seed of me, God has in his mind a harvest for me. Harvest so when God asks to me to give that seed, God already designed that he got a big harvest for me. So when my harvest starts to come, the people is going to get vexed with me. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, my friends, let me tell you, let me tell you. When I came to this corner, there was no houses through here, none whatsoever, except for one or two hours way down the road. And in July of 19 something, God tell me go outside and look, I have it on my camera, and I want you to go outside and look. And God said, eyes, as far as your eyes can see through this corner, I am going to give it to, to you, for the church and for you. And I was so, I, I couldn't believe it. And one day I was sitting down and a man, in my office, come in, in open up the newspaper. When I open up the newspaper, I see property for sale. Yes. The man came and he drove up towards this corner and he pulled up in the front of the little place right there yes. where that stairway is. That's where our church was. Yes. And he parked his car. I sat there and I used to wear a gun then. I had my snub nose on my leg. And I was there and I was waiting the fellow jump out, he started talking. So I said, hey, look here, man. I said, man, I gotta go to work. He said, well, go, we're just a property here. And all of this was bush. 
I have twenty-seven thousand dollars in my hand. So it means that I could buy all of this property with twenty-seven thousand dollars at that time, and I was working. I was making enough money to finance every piece of property through here. But I have no faith. The only thing I could, the only thing I had faith enough to do was buy two pieces, and God preserve another piece. And let me tell you, let me tell you, if you got any property through your whole it. Because God said, as far as my eye could see, I could get. Oh, listen, I am greedy. The person said, You come to church. But let me tell you, let me, let me, let me, I, can, I, can, I really want to blow your mind this morning. Because we need to get out of the mindset. The white man, Simonet. The white man, Christie. The white man, Bella. All in Cat Island. They want all in Cat Island. Wow. The man called, um, what the man named, out, out, out in Pinewood. That's when I need some help. Frankie Wilson, yeah, they own all of them. You think they buy all of that? No, they didn't buy all of that, but guess what? Somebody tell them that there was the land there. Now listen to me, if God promised you some land, you still right there, say, call me Mr. Nice Guy, but I ain't got enough money. No. I don't know any money, I go to the bank to borrow the bank. Too much people selling money out, land out here for you to go to the bank and boil yourself down in, in that payment. Well, if you ain't have no faith, go to the bank. But what happened is that last week, the Lord blessed me. The man sold me some land around here. And then I was passing. The man said, boy, I will give you that same little piece of land right there. And I want you to build two houses on it. A little piece of land right there, only 40 by 41 by 100. Some people don't want me to sell it, but I want this to go on record. Oh, yeah. And when I sent the ocean in there to clean up, the people who, who live next to, that, to the land, who never buy the land, mm -hmm. they say, tell the ocean, the, the mighty gardener, Get off the property because this was. I went to the man and said, Go back to work. Right. <laughs> if, they, if they can produce a paper for you, then you'll move. But as far as I know, I am the one who got the paper. Right. And so they say, Oh, wrap covetous, wrap this and wrap that, wrap the next. Yeah. Honey, listen to me. You're not going to get any land, you're not going to possess anything because everything that God has given you is coming out of the hands of somebody. When God sent Abraham into the land, God sent him into the land of the Canaanites, the Heptites, the Parasites, the Gagazite, the Dissazite, the Nazazite. All of these lands were owned by these sites. Yeah. But God told him, go in there, I'll possess the land. Yeah. You don't worry with them, and the Parasites say, you come in, you ain't mean our deeds, but you come. You know what the man would say? Me and um, somebody was talking the other night, and um, um, I ain't supposed to pay them. And, and they don't normally, normally ask for their money. So I forgot. And when I was going, he said, the person said, you know you want to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking, and so they, 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 as I passed by them, they say, you know you ain't pay me. I said, what? I said, you know you ain't pay me. But, but I ain't put down no fight. It's just that, you know you ain't pay me. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is that when God begins to move you and to bless you, you have to root up somebody. Somebody can get root up to a woman like in the same man. Somebody got to get root up to get, you get root up, that's your business. Somebody can get root up and you can get your land. You ain't want to God say, let me give it to you. When God say you want to have it, you start scared. They say, get out this land. The man told me, the old bishop be 95 years of age. He said, when God began to bless you, you have to have a, a, a forehead like steel, like splint. You have to have steel in your forehead. Because people are not going to stand by and watch you get blessed without being jealous. They are not going to watch time and watch you get blessed without being covetous. And so they accuse me of being covetous because God blessed me. Yeah. Now I want to tell you there's a lot of land to possess right here. You can say, well, I'm going to wait. Wait on what? I'm going to wait till my change come. But once the man tell me he got something, I said, this got to be my change. And now you got to trouble the throne. You got to trouble the throne of God. You got to say, God, they took what the enemy took things from me. Now I come back to what the devil stole from me. But you all going to hear what sin. I tell you, sin will stop you at the door. Yes. Sin will buy you out. Come now and let us reason together.
together and said to the Lord, Do your sins be scarlet? I will make them white as snow, and if you red as crimson, they shall be as wool. If you will be listening to God and you operate in God, God said, You're going to reap the good of the land. Yes. The good of the land. All the promises that God ever made to man was a promise of land. Yes. Listen to me. You all think I'm joking here. No. All the promise that God made to man in this earth was a promise of land. God said, go on and possess the land. God said, as far as your feet should trod, God said, go on and possess the land. When God, when God said, when you die, he said, you think I'm joking it? The use of the behavior vernacular, he said, you all think I'm joking it? He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, for what? Many mansions. When you dare, God's still talking with land. When you dare, God's still promising you land. In my Father's house, there are what? How many mansions? Is it one mansion? What is a mansion? God talking with only Clapboard House. I, I like Clapboard House. But God said He can give you a mansion. When you die, the white man tell you, oh child, I racist. There's a pie in the sky waiting for you when you die. But between the day you born and when you die, nobody seems to hear you when they cry. Honey, let me get some of this pie right now. Yes. I'm sorry, the church. Yes. Oh, you all must think I'm joking it. All of the promises that God made, Brother Jeremy, roll up, let me show them. I'm just going to read this because time and go back to Noah. From Noah, after Abraham, after Noah, God spent a sweet savor, and the Lord said to the side, I'm not going to curse the what? The ground. God said, I ain't going to curse the ground. Is ground land? Yeah. God said, I ain't going to curse the ground anymore for man's sake. Because for the what? The imagination. God doesn't know what inside of you. The imagination of your heart is only evil and wicked continually. From I don't care how sanctified you may look, your heart is still bad. The imagination of your heart is only evil from your youth. But God said, yes, still, I am going to bless the ground. Go up another one, Jay. Go up another one if there's another one. Now the Lord said, oh God, I want to go back to Noah, but no, God, that's when God put in the, ru the rules of sowing and heart reaping. As long as the earth remain, there'll be seed time, there'll be harvest, there'll be summer, there'll be winter, there'll be hot and there'll be cold. These will never ever cease as long as this earth remains. So God told Abraham, now listen, you're talking about possession? Why do you think it is a sin for all of us to sit here broke, poor, busted and disgusted every Sunday, we come here crying, oh how I love Jesus and you're still broke. Why? Maybe because we don't know what we need to do. I want to give another seed. I want to sow another seed. This one ain't big. But I want to sow another seed. And this one's so small that it's so small that, trust me, this can take plenty of faith for you to operate the seed. I want to, I want to sow this, this seed. This small seed I want to sow. Small seed. Small. Come here. Let me sow this seed. See, I, I, I can sow the seed right here. Small seed, in big. Now listen, it's small. Piece of that seed is for you, and piece for you to put back. I know. When you sow your seed into the ground, God is going to release the harvest back to you. What some people do is they eat up all the seed and say, thank you, God, for this harvest. It's never supposed to eat up all your seed. Now next Sunday, or the fourth Sunday every month, I'm giving out big seed. You want some big seed? Come on the fourth Sunday of the month, and I'm not giving out anything under $100. And what I'm doing that for is I'm doing that to teach you how you can get what will disrupt you in. You think that the more you, the more you get is the richer you become. But to the contrary, I wish I had someone who knew where my corn seed is in the room. The more you give, it's the more you get. It's not the more you take. The God's a God loving and cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, I have so much seed. Uh, show me, I got my seed out of my office there. Where are we talking about? Quickly, because I got ready to stop. 
Hi, my name is Shiro, like it, that's fine. I got to talk to her, that's my seat. Yeah. She's the one who tell the man, if you touch him, you will touch a lot of people to touch. Wow. Yeah, I've touched my whole generation. That's what she tell the man, right, mother, know that? So all I'm telling you all today is that in order to get seeds to sow, you got to put something in the ground. You can't be stingy, you can't be mean. And you got to listen to God. Oh, I wish I had some more seed to sow. Boy, on the fourth Sunday in the month, that's the Sunday, what I call Seed Sunday. Remember that now? Put that in the bulletin. Seed Sunday, the fourth Sunday in the month. There will be at least five people in the house who I'm going to sow into. And then when God start blessing me, one day all, all Jesus say, man, all this man talking about his money, money, listen to me. I realize that sin will stop me at the door. Yeah. Sin will bar me out of heaven forevermore. You cannot please live some serve God and you cannot. These are all corn seed. From one scorn, listen, only one seed. One seed give me more than this amount. One corn tree, I get all of these. This is the principle of seed time and harvest. I can go and boil all of these. A popcorn them. No, these are my seed. Every piece of land I can put corn on it. I got so much seed I can be selling corn seed in brown bag. All right. And as I sell the seed, people are gonna get corn. There gonna be corn over here. There gonna be corn over here. There gonna be corn up there. My God, from the top of Zion, just from your seed, baby. If you don't understand, I'm saying it again. The only master that your future will obey is your seed. Amen. And your seed is the only influence that you have over your, over your future. Jeremy, go to the, hold it right there. You know, go back there, Jeremy. Good place. Very clean right there. I'm closing on this. God said, go out from your land. Where is that from? Oh. Go out from what? Yes. Your land. And from your what? Relatives. Relatives. And from the house of your? Wow. To a what? To a land that I will go into the number or claim your heart yet. Go to just go. There's a land out there to possess. God is saying to the church, there is a land to possess. There's a land here and there's a land there. You can live here like a dog, like a puffer, or you can die in wealthy. The, the bishop who's 95 years of age, he'll be 96. He told me, he said, son, remember this. He said, I love you, boy, you're just like my son. And when he start to talk, I can hear him try to, he will put things on me. And I said to him, I said, God, if this my father, so let it be. You know what he told me? Son, I told my son, he said, which would you like to be? A man who's sick in the hospital, sit on the, in the hospital and have a mortgage to pay. He got um, school fee to pay, water bill to pay, light bill to pay, and he's sick in the hospital. Uh, then in the same hospital, there's another man, he has no bills. He's sick, he has no worry. He's just waiting until the change comes. Which would you want to be? A sick rich man? Or you want to be a sick worrying man? He said, the answer is clear. He said, I told God, he said, son, when I did, I want to die rich. Wow. He 95 years of age. I said, what do you think is the reason for your riches? Stand by the store. I can lift my the store. <laughs> she didn't want me to help her, but I want to help her. He said, my mother and my daddy, he said, whatever I could have given them, I gave it to them until they did. And he said, I believe that they blessed me. So there's still a blessing from your parents to be gotten. He said, that's why I live to see 95 years going for 96. So there lies your blessing. Your parent, there lies your blessing. Oh, I can't help mommy, I got my own bill. Do it out and give your mother. Amen. Amen. And so as I live, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, now, when you, what you sowing and reaping, you ain't sowing for yourself. You also, when God make a promise to you, God only promised that to you, God promised it to your offspring. The Lord will appear to Abraham and say, to your offspring, your, your, your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who will appear to him. So while you're here, like operating, I want some of y'all to hear me good. 
You operate like you have no land. And God then give your granddaddy, your great granddaddy, your uncle land. And you still here bickering? Man, go there and possess the land. There's something called a generation change. If you was a first cousin, you come after me as a brother. If you was a first cousin, you come after me as a grandson. If you was a grandson, you come after me as a son. So you gotta go out there and possess the land, my friends. And when you die, you're also gonna possess one of those, those mansions that he promised on or over the hilltop, a house not made with Hannah, that has that's entitled in the heavens. Amen. 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 I know God is moving today. Yeah. I wish I had sometimes I wish I had a church though. Yeah. I always wish I had a church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because what God telling me is real. Yeah. And some of you come here laugh, say, oh, the way of faith only got say, only come to watch, let me see one day. And then you never look at what you see with your naked eye. Yeah. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But they that come unto God must believe that He is, and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. We got to wait on God's promise to come to fulfillment. And I believe that when some of y'all come to church one of these Sunday, I don't know when it's going to be, and thereafter, you can count five and see. Amen. You stay right there and don't believe it. It can happen. And guess what? If you're if you blocking it, then it can happen that you stop blocking it. And I ain't blocking it because I, I expect it. I know it. That it got to come. But in the meantime, I'm going to protect the things that God put under my purview and do the things that God told me to do from day one. I'm not going to slack the writing. I'm not going to compromise because to compromise means to give up and to say that you are finished. So do not compromise. You got to hold on. Be strong and be stable. And at the end of the day, God will bring you through. It's your one.